Let's talk about the 12 inch fashion sized Guinevere doll. From the photo, the only photo that it seems that we have, you had discussed that this was from, I believe, the London design team. So let's just kind of start that conversation then. Okay, let me go backwards just a little bit here to set the frame. Hasbro at that time had only three real design teams. They had other ones for like smaller, they kept buying companies. So for a while, they might have a design team over in Seattle where they just bought a new toy company. But there was three design teams. There was Rhode Island, which was the original Hasbro. There was Cincinnati, which was Kenner which, um, you know, obviously was a huge design team and, and a lot of history and, and, and quality that they've been putting out for years. And then the third one was the London group. Now, I, I met people from the London group, and they, they were responsible for doing all of the Action Man products specifically. That was probably the biggest thing they did there because the G.I. Joe jump around i'll try to make this quick gi joe sold in europe under the name action man because gi means general issue it's a literally an american term so they had action man and it's out it sold the same time gi joe did in europe from 1964 to 1979 78 anyway and then it kept selling even though Hasbro stopped selling it. They licensed it to a company named Pally Toy, who was making the international version. So there was this huge version over huge markets still of that. And then they, when they resurrected G.I. Joe in the U.S., they resurrected Action Man for the European market. And it was a huge deal. It was tons and tons of stuff. It's just amazing. There was, there was probably a thousand SKUs of product. Um, and so you had a very robust design team over there. And sometimes they would borrow some of the stuff I designed for G.I. Joe. And sometimes I, a lot of it, I borrowed their stuff. And so evidently, they, oh, so they also worked on Cindy, which Cindy was an established girl's property, a girl's fashion doll in, in the U.K. particularly. It sold very well. What I've heard different stories on this because I'm not an expert in this area, but I was told it sold really well until Hasbro bought it, tried to turn it into Barbie and made her look like a harlot. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sales tanked after that. So then they no longer had this big line that they thought they had. They thought they bought the Barbie. But at the time, that Cindy doll was more of a cute girl next door, not a fashion model. And so wow. it kind of and the irony up. is, is that Barbie is based on the German kind of sexy doll. So exactly, Lily. Yeah, <laughs> Lily. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so they had a team there, and then they so they took the tooling from the Cindy doll, and they took one of the horses from Cindy, and because, as you mentioned, it was selling pretty well in France, they they put together a real basic Starla. And, and asked if we should do this. And ironically, so that was one part of this that happened. And that happened just about the same time as just before the line died. And I looked at the pictures and went, you know, 12 inch figures are my passion. So I'm like, of course I want a 12 inch Guinevere. I've wanted one the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, we did too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she would have been so cool. Um, and I remember looking at it, and I remember that they said, you know, Greg, you have kind of the authority here because you're the one pushing everything. You know, tell them how to make this so it can be right and fit with what you're doing, which I was looking forward to doing. Ironically, at just before that, one of the other designers at Kenner actually suggested it. And, ooh. Okay, this is being recorded, so I have to be careful what I'm saying here. Um, they thought it would be a good project for that person, so they wouldn't. So it wouldn't affect other things. Um, and so that person actually designed a very basic figure 
And um, and it was okay. She actually did some interesting soft goods. I mean, she basically copied what I had done on the figure, which wasn't bad. And so I actually handmade clear armor helmets. One set. Plastic or fabric? Plastic. So because she wasn't capable of doing that part. And so I, I made one set of clear armor with the helmet, with a, with a rotating visor and a visor chest plate probably greaves and gauntlets i'm assuming and that's discarded actually i sold it <laughs> oh you sold it i sold it all already but i can't in fact i was sitting here looking to see if i could find any pictures of it back to your yeah. comment don't you copy everything before right. you get rid of it and yes i do and but and so I may someday find those pictures because I would have had to have had pictures if I did that. Mm -hmm. But I can't find the pictures. And all the and and I, I listed them pretty much just like what I said. This was the only ones that were done like that. And people had known that eBay store enough that there was enough real things coming from it when it came out, they bought it. Someone mm -hmm. bought it. I think there was only like one bid. Um but yeah, some, so someone that. has that set. Um, and so it was interesting because so there really was a push to make a 12 inch Guinevere from two different angles. But the only one that the photograph exists is the one from the London office. So was there ever a secondary doll itself since you made the armor or was it only the Cindy doll that has really been ever made as a prototype? Well, there was there was the other doll that the other designer made where it really didn't look like that character. She took a Cindy doll also because we had been work. I can't remember the timing. We worked on Cindy in Cincinnati where we're going to make a big push in the U S for Cindy. And um, I can't remember if the timing was before or after Guinevere. It was in that same time period anyway. Um, and we'd end up using some of that tooling for the Sabrina doll. Oh, the Sabrina doll. Yeah. Yay. So, I love that doll. So there was a doll made, but it was never a doll that was made a full present a full presentation model was never made in the US of a 12 inch figure. I see. You know, and it it's interesting because I can talk about the other sets that I oh, I wish that we would have had the carriage. And yes, I made a carriage out of wood, but I would honestly say amongst fans, number one, definitely are jewels. Everyone seems to have made their own power jewels. So that was probably the number one thing that probably would have sold after the dolls. But yeah. second is fashion dolls. Like we get a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm making custom Jewel Rider dolls or I'm going to make a custom, you know, out of Barbie or something like that. So that's definitely something that a lot of the fans have taken to their own, you know, creative ways and made their own dolls. So I, I, it would have definitely been very popular. Yeah. I would have loved to have done fashion dolls for her. I, it would have. Yeah, that would have been a blast. <laughs> Kickstarter, <laughs> here we come. Yeah. <laughs> By the magic of the sunstone, you're tuned into the Jewel Riders Archive.